Don Schundorfer grew up in Ohio. His dad was never able to complete the eighth grade. His dad worked for 49 years for the railroad, but in all that time, he was never able to be promoted above the role of foreman. And he was brilliant. He could fix any machine ever made. He could make something out of nothing. And he was good with people too. But because of his lack of education, he was never promoted as much as he would have liked. And they were always struggling financially. Don's parents told him from a young age that they wanted him to get an education so that he could earn a good living. Don, like his dad, was really good at putting together things. At the age of 10, he found all this scrap metal and different things and built himself a go-kart and he would rush around the neighborhood getting into near accidents everywhere. His mom told him, I want you to grow up to be like your uncle George. He has a good degree and he's a businessman in New York. By the age of 12, Don decided that his goal in life was to get a PhD at MIT in Boston. He set his goal really high and he started working hard. He was smart, he took extra jobs when he needed to, and he got himself all the way there. He even found a young woman who actually wanted to marry him. After getting a big grant and getting close to his PhD, he was able to take his new young wife traveling They were walking on some cobbled streets in Morocco when Dawn saw a woman who was dragging herself along the ground. She couldn't have been more than a hundred pounds. Her hands were bloodied and covered with blisters. She was dirty completely filthy from the dirt of the ground and all these people were walking by. It looked like she couldn't move from her waist down. Her feet were limp, but she was dragging herself by her hands and elbows. He couldn't see her face because she was so focused on trying to get ahead another foot on the ground. He stopped and he grabbed his wife's hand and said, we've got to help her, we've got to do something. But they just stood there staring. They didn't know what to do until this woman disappeared amongst the feet and the legs of all these people walking by. Don finished his PhD and got this great job for a technology company that built medical instruments and developed patents. He moved to California and was making such a good salary that his wife decided to have some kids and stay at home. They had some daughters. She was a great mom. He thought he was doing everything right, providing for his family the way he was told he was supposed to by his own parents. But when his oldest daughter got to be a teenager, she developed a severe eating disorder. She basically stopped eating. It was so dangerous and so bad that they had to put her in an inpatient unit for treatment. And Don 
was so upset and he didn't understand. I've done everything, he thought to himself. I've given her everything. Why has she stopped eating? I don't understand. After a month of treatment, the staff said that she was doing better and that Don and his wife could come and visit her. She wanted to go to church with them. Don hadn't been to church in I don't know how long. Since he was a kid, his daughter sat in between her mom and dad and she held their hands. And after the service, she took them to the minister and said, I want you to meet my mom and dad because I think they need to go to church too. Don said that in that moment when his daughter was holding his hands and he heard her saying that, it was as if he raised up above his body and he looked down on his life. And he realized that everything he had been trying to do, just making a good living, providing for his family, it wasn't bad, but it, it wasn't what God wanted. He looked down on his life and he thought, I don't want this to be about me anymore. I want to do what you want, God. I want to do what you want. Don went home and joined a local church, but he didn't really know what he was supposed to do. I, he would say to God, look, I don't know you very much, but I want to do what you want, but what am I supposed to do? Would you show me? I don't understand. He tried volunteering for the youth group, but it was like hell for him because he was a severe introvert, and all they did was talk. But one afternoon, he was thinking, and all of a sudden, it occurred to him, wait, God made me with certain skills. I, I can make something out of nothing. And then in a flash, he remembered that woman who was dragging herself on the ground in Morocco. And he thought to himself, I could make her a wheelchair. I could help that woman get up off the ground and the whole world would look different to her. The people that come here a lot hear me talk a lot about language because the Bible wasn't written in English. The New Testament was written in an ancient Greek the Old Testament and ancient Hebrew. And back then there were much fewer words, which meant that every word meant so much. It was simple, but it had so much rich meaning. The word resurrection, well, it means simply this, get up. Get up, rise. You see, people back then, before there was the kind of medicine we have today, well, a lot of people would just be walking along and they'd have, well, what today we would describe as an aneurysm or a heart attack or something, but they just fell down and died. Or some people would go to bed and never wake up. They'd never get up. So what it says in the ancient text, what was so amazing, is that Jesus got up. He rose. There was a study done recently in which they asked a bunch of people from Ukraine one question. Do you believe that there is a bright future for your country? 
Do you believe there is a bright future for your country? You know, six million people have fled Ukraine since the war began. Half of the population that remains is bordering on homelessness and doesn't know when their next meal is coming. And yet, 77% of the Ukrainians who were asked said yes. They believe in a bright future for their country. And then the same interviewers interviewed a group of Americans. What percentage of Americans do you think believe there is a bright future for this country? 42%. We have fallen down. We are dragging ourselves on the ground, arguing over who's right and who's wrong, and whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. We've got our heads in the dirt, and we've forgotten who we are. Do you all remember the great movie Braveheart with Mel Gibson? It's okay if you hate Mel Gibson, that doesn't matter. <laughs> In the movie, it takes place at the turn of the 13th century. And there's this amazing Scottish warrior who has this great idea. See, Scotland is occupied by the British. They're enslaved. Their land doesn't belong to them. Nothing belongs to them and they're impoverished. And this man, William Wallace, develops this long spear. They've never been able to win against the English in battle because the English have cavalry. They're riding horses, and the Scots are all walking on the ground. But William Wallace makes this long wooden spear so that they can spear the horses before they get to the Scotmen. Well, I felt bad for the horses when I saw the movie, but for the first time in their history, the Scottish win a battle. And after their victory, the Scottish lords meet in a hall with William Wallace, and the Scottish lords start arguing about who's going to get what land and what title. And William Wallace starts to leave the room. They call out, Wallace, where are you going? And he turns around and he says something amazing to them, something that we all need to hear today. He says, you are so busy arguing over the scraps that has fallen from Longshank's table. You are so busy groveling on the ground and fighting with each other. You have forgotten what it means to be free. You have forgotten who you are. Don brought his first wheelchair to a little boy in Chennai, India. The boy has cerebral palsy. His parents are rice farmers but only one of them can work because the other one has to carry him everywhere. When Don put this boy in the wheelchair, his smile, it lit up the world. His name, this little boy's name, Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Don rose up to understand that he was a spiritual being, an eternal being, a follower of Jesus. This Jesus who walked the earth, who talked about nature, who loved his friends, who healed, who fed people, who gave of himself, 
but we've fallen. We're spiritually starving. We've forgotten who we are. We're groveling on the ground fighting with each other. Get up, rise up. Remember what it means to be free. You are eternal beings made by the God of all. God has made you with a specific and amazing gift in mind, your own true gift. You were made to care for this earth and everyone in it. Rise up, Easter people, and remember who you are. Amen.